60, 59, 58. This is a countdown 57, to the Slade and Mason 56, Show. 55, 54, This continues to be a countdown to the Slade and Mason Show. 50, 49, 48, You're listening to the countdown to the 46, Slade and Mason Show. 45, 44, 43, This is the continued 42, countdown to the Slade and Mason 40, Show. I guess I should record this, huh? 38, right now. <laughs> 37, you're listening hey, to the countdown. 35, the Slade and Mason 34, Show. 33, Please stand 32, by. as you're you listening to the countdown 30, to the Slade and Mason Show. 28, 27, this 26, of course, the 25, to the Slade and Mason Show. 23, 22, we continue now with the countdown 20, to the Slade 19, and Mason Show. 18, 17, Stand by 16, as we are 15, now delivering the countdown 14, to the Slade 13, and Mason Show. 12, 11, yes, 10, this is our countdown 9, to the Slade 8, and Mason 7, Show. 6, 5, ready? 4, here we go. 3, 2, 1. It's back! Oh, no! <laughs> Now broadcasting from the Dan Mason Studios, deep in the heart of Virginia, it's the Slade and Mason Show. Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason, and this is the Slade and Mason Show. Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason, and this is the Slade and Mason Show. Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. Name it twice. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> good, uh, good, good. Good morning, Mr. Slade. Good morning, Mr. Mason. Uh, How you been? I'm doing all right. Happy, happy, uh, happy, 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 happy. Yeah. Okay, you're waiting for me, aren't you? No, I got to do my disclaimer. All right. All right, this is the Slade and Mason Show. It's all about you and us. It's all like uh, pretty much like a radio program. What? Uh, don't don't lie to them. Be honest. All right, it's, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's all right, this is the Slade and Mason Show. It's all about us. <laughs> <laughs> see? All right, thank you very much. All right. Bye. You Bye, everybody. You guys take care. We'll see you all next weekend. Bye-bye. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. We don't have all that time to play like this stuff anymore. No, we don't. That's no, we like... don't. I'll explain that a little bit here. All right. So uh, anyway, it's like a radio program where we share with you news stories and things we see throughout the week. It's our take on it. Basically. Only better. Only better. Yeah. And we're just we're just basically saying things that you're thinking in your dirty little mind, but you would never hear on the radio. Uh, just having fun. Don't take it too seriously. Enjoy all the music you're listening to. It's brought to you by Dano Music. Um, also, check out uh, Instagram where you'll see that 2016 picture. Don't forget to tell your friends, neighbors, cops. Also, we are uh, pushing our merch just in time for Christmas. You guys got to get some merch. Saw that awful video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now the the shirt that JD was uh, was uh, espousing, we don't have that available yet. And <laughs> the mug, which has the two images on it, we don't have that right now. However, we do have uh, a, we have something that JD doesn't have, and that's a Slade Mason show hoodie. We also have. Uh, the uh, uh, the Brimley's mug, which does feature <laughs> the Brimley's logo and the Slade Mason Show logo on the same thing. And you can get some Slade Mason Show socks, apparently. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, just in time for winter, you know? You so, know, it's like, I've, have you ever heard of Bumpus? Bumpus, that's a town here in Virginia. No, 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 not Bumpus. 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 Uh, uh, isn't that like a Check disease of the out. nose? Look it out. Look it up. B O M. B O S, no Bumpus. B U S. B O M S. B U S. And while you're doing that, let me just, uh, let me just alleviate your mind. Uh, I do not have a rant this week. It's a type of B. No Bumpus. Bumpus Terrace, the buff-tailed bumblebee, or no, large earth bumblebee, bumpus. is one of the most numerous bumblebees a species right. in Europe. Put Once a type species. I can Bumpus socks. Is there like a P in there somewhere? Yes, it's B O M P O S. My baloney has a first name. It's Socken. Yeah, right. All right, here we go. Anyway, uh, I, I, I do not have a rant this morning because as I woke up and I was getting up, I'm not angry about anything. Oh. 
but well, let me let me let me charge you then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I woke up and I got up this morning and I, I got I thought to myself, I really am feeling kind of melancholy because it's that time of year. It's the most wonderful yeah, right, time yeah. of that, the year. Wow. Anyway, uh, but it's I, it reminded me, and I thought, you know, as I think to myself when I remember things in the past, I have a much better picture of what they were than they actually were. And I guess that's what makes me cool because then it's like otherwise I'd be screaming and pulling my hair out and things like that. But I remember as a child, the holiday seasons would come along, the house smelled differently, and do you remember on Thanksgiving, nothing was open? Yes, yes, yes. And the same for Christmas, nothing was open. Yes. And there was something about, you know, you'd get up on Thanksgiving and Christmas morning and nobody would be out. Nobody would be out in the back. Cars wouldn't be going all over the place. That would start about 10, 11 o'clock as people were figuring out where they were going for Thanksgiving or Christmas. Mm -hmm. But nobody was going to shop. Nobody was going to Walmart. Yep. Nobody was even going to 7-Eleven. Yep. I mean, it's like, and I think those are the things that I miss the most about the holidays, even though... Sometimes it seems awful inconvenient for you because you just wanted to have something that you couldn't get because the store was closed. Well, and, and so it's interesting you mentioned that because I remember, remember uh, this goes many, many, many years back where, where the heck? We, I, it was up in New Jersey way back when, when I was a Ute. And sure enough, my brother needed to get uh, something as simple as a lemon. And it was it was Thanksgiving Day. And no, it just wasn't going to happen. There wasn't any place available where you could get a lemon. Even went to like a set. Now the Seven Lemons were all open. You know that. That was that. They've always been open. But but they didn't have lemons. <laughs> no lemons. No, couldn't find a lemon to save his life because all the stores were closed. But now they're all open. Yeah, and that that you know, it's like I mean, I live just about. Uh, I guess maybe 200 yards from a sheets mm -hmm. and Dan, I got to tell you, it broke my heart to get calls from people who were at sheets because they wanted to get some coffee or they wanted to get something to eat and things like that. I'm, I'm, I'm so disenchanted with, uh, with, with, with people because we've lost an innocence that we can't get back. And it breaks my heart. Well, look, it's real simple. <laughs> <laughs> get over it. <laughs> hey, that's what Nick Mulvaney said. Get over it. <laughs> get over it. <laughs> but I, I did. I thought about that. And it's like, and I thought, because I know that you and I have lived in the same part of the country, the great Northeast. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you know, and and we're both Catholic, so you know, you went to midnight mass at Christmas Eve, and oh, then it's like you you go home, and it's like, and you try to go to sleep, but you know, you're so doggone excited because you know it's Christmas, mm -hmm. and you know, but now it's just it's like well, whatever. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. Yeah, I know, I know, and I and, and I and I. And no I march think, of the wooden soldiers. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, and I, and I think that you know, you when you talk about a loss of innocence, you know, this this whole world changed has changed in the last fifty years, and it's not for the better, ladies and gentlemen. I am telling you, simple pleasures are the best. Yep. <clears throat> so speaking of simple pleasures, it, it's interesting. We. <laughs> No, 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 no. Nothing gross or disgusting. Oh. Get your mind out of gutter, you disgusting Sorry. slime ball. So, uh, as you know, things were kind of goofy here for a couple of years. I'll just leave it at that. And so I stored a lot of personal effects off-site. And I went to collect them the other day, yesterday actually, and I came across piles and piles and piles and piles of 45s. 
back in, it was like 1986 to 1989 because I was doing mobile DJ work. And it really required you to go down to the, the music shop and pick up that week's worth of top 40 songs. Fortunately, a lot of them <laughs> stuck in the top 40s. But, you know, uh, unfortunately, a lot of things like expose and things like that, they, you had to, ugh, in hindsight, it would have been cheaper to just buy the, the, the CD. But you never know, week to week, if it's going to go gold well, or whatever. Now, now, hold on a second, Dan, so, because mm -hmm. we're talking about 1986. Now, okay, I was uh, doing hops and such back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, mm -hmm. and I decided that I didn't want to do them anymore because I could never keep up with the, all the stupid requests that people would come up with. Right. I told you about the nursing home story. Well, write, write that down on a piece of paper. Okay, got it. But I'm, I'm going to tell you about my, my simple pleasures. Um, so we brought all the 45s back, and my daughter is helping me go through them one by one by one by one. And it was kind of fun because – you you uh you get a song and it's like oh yeah that's a great song would hold on to that one or mm, yeah it's a dog we're gonna put that up on you know eBay so it was kind of fun because the tangibility of a forty five piece of vinyl that you know if you lay it down and you spin it and play it it's gonna bring bring pleasure to you immediately um, <laughs> not again get your mind out of the gutter you slime ball. No, thinking, that's not the spin I want. <laughs> <laughs> you oh. sick little puppy. But uh, no, it, it was kind of nice. You know, we were sitting there, and I said, "But so you uh, got nostalgic," is what you did. Uh, yeah, I guess. No, I guess that's the. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Getting a little bit of nostalgia there. Um, but that's again, it's it's that whole thing about you know Thanksgiving time was a nostalgic time. You always, I always wound up sitting at the uh, the little kids table. Because, quite frankly, I'd have to wait for someone to die at the big kids' table to get the big seat. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that, but that's how it works, man. You're always going to be sitting on the piano bench. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> Sit next to your sister. <laughs> see, and, and, and see, because you you had a big family, and, and, and I, I didn't. Yeah. I had me. You know, it's like it was me. You didn't have the kids' table. <laughs> Was the kids' table, you know? So I mean, but I just like I say, and that's another difference. That again, it's also cultural differences because you know, uh, I mean, here's here's what I know about Thanksgiving. Okay, if I'm going to go to someone's house, I can guarantee you that there is going to be drunk Uncle Billy <laughs> who is going to want to challenge everybody in the house. Yeah, you think you're better than me just because you got business. Okay. You had an Uncle and, Bill, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we all have an Uncle Bill. <laughs> and and then there's Aunt Molly, who, uh, again, bless your heart. And then she's going to go upstairs to the bathroom, and she's the one who's going to stop the toilet up. <laughs> do these people sound familiar? <laughs> uh, yeah, they do. <laughs> uh, and God, I'm glad I live in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, you've got you. You definitely have the. Uh, there's going to be at least one or two relatives who decided that they weren't going to sleep the night before because they're coming to your house to sleep. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and then they're parked out on the couch, going. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. You know, they're, they're waking the dead with the snoring and so on and so forth. Uh, okay, you were talking about. I, I just wanted to diverge there, get into the holiday spirit. <laughs> it's the holiday season. <laughs> Forward to this stuff, and they and they know it's going to be a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I am so happy. I, I really am because while I am alone, mm -hmm. I am not lonely. So I get to observe all these disasters <laughs> that are going on around me. You know, people who are late for dinner, and it's like, oh my god, he's mad. Uh, you know, again. You brought too many people to the house. You brought people who were already in an altered state of mind, and man, they are raw. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, uh, what it was that? Uh, <clears throat> not not a, not that they are the greatest performers at all time, but uh, remember the outfield again, nineteen eighty six. Oh yeah, on a vacation right. far away. <clears throat> they had a B song called Sixty One Seconds. It was the line goes. 61 seconds is all it takes for a nine to five man to be more than one minute late. And I went, Oh my gosh, what a line. 
And that's why it was a B-side. That's right. <laughs> 61 seconds is all it takes for a night to find man to be more than one minute late. Well, you see, There's I've been a clock in on the for wall. So long that all the singles that I had, they were always the same on both sides. <laughs> And it said for promotion only. Do not resell. (laughs) (laughs) But you could get 50 cents for them. (laughs) I paid a dollar for you. Do you remember when there used to be the distinction? You had one side that was Monoro and the other side, which you could only hear half the stuff. Oh, my gosh. Mamas and the Papas are classic for that. dreaming if you have a true stereo it's like you will hear the definite split <laughs> from poor, side to side poor jd right. <laughs> right. so i was going to tell you a quick story about my 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 dj experiences my mobile dj experience all right yep i used to do them and i i got to the point where you know it was almost like once a month i would have to be doing them and it got to be really a pain because at the time we didn't have cd technology i know I know. I was carting around about 900 record albums. and got boxes and boxes yep. and, and milk carton crates, milk crates yeah. full of albums and such. Yep. All right. So this one holiday, it was Christmas, as a matter of fact. I got a call from the nursing home here in town. Mm-hmm. And they said, J.D., we would love for you to come and, and do our Christmas party, blah, 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 blah. And I said, okay, well, I had learned that the only way that I could make sure that I had everything covered is if I provided sheets of paper with lists so that people could write the songs they wanted to hear. How'd that go? (laughs) Hey, proactive. All right, so I get the list back, and I got a lot of of songs here, and I got them all. I got them all. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, I carry all my other stuff so that I can fill in and things like that. I get ready to get started. Hey, everybody, thank you for coming to the nursing home, blah, blah, blah. I'm bloody God. You know, again, and I'll take your request. Da, 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 da. Mistake number one. Mm-hmm. As saying that you will take anybody's request is a stupid thing to do live. Well, yes and no. So <clears throat> Wait, you're going to see why in a second. Go ahead. All right, so all of a sudden, it's like, here comes somebody who's had a couple of brews and maybe a couple of hard liquor shots, too. Hey, baby! Yeah, what can I do with that? I got the microphone in my hand. Hey, how you doing? Hey, yeah, yeah, ha, ha. I got a request. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, sure. What do you got? Do you play Hail to the Redskins? <laughs> No. Do you know, I think I had every doggone genre of music carried alive to cover these people. I did not have Hail to the Redskins. And thanks to Drunk Charlie here, now people are starting to get, yeah, Hail to the Redskins, Hail to the Redskins. Oh. So So I put on, I put on, I think I might have played, um, Disco Inferno by the Tramps. That's the that's exactly minutes. the same song. <laughs> the ten minutes, but the it's ten backwards. Minutes. It's backwards. You know where the nursing home is, don't you? Uh, it's right down from yeah, that place right went. up the street. So it's like I put on the Disco Inferno from the Tramps. I came back to the radio station. I sure as heck went into the library, got the copy of Hail to the Redskins, had to play that doggone song six times that night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that was that was the end of my doing the sock hops and doing the, uh, the what party. What did we learn, Dorothy? We learned mm. that uh, I I don't make enough money to do those things. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it's in, you were doing it right. When did you cut out? When was that? What year? It would have been uh, eighty three, probably eighty two, eighty three. Okay. And what were you getting for a gig? Uh, one hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. Okay. I better not tell you what I was doing in, in New Jersey. Anyway. I don't really care because you were robbing them. What? Three hundred fifty dollars? What? Because the Guidos were making sure that you got. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, one of the one of the the best and worst gigs I ever did was the it was like one of the very first ones, and it was for um, uh, uh, cops. 
Who? Police officers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, let me tell you something. Them boys and girls can drink. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Look, yeah. They can put it away. They put me easily under the table. Where do you think the best car parts come from? <laughs> come on, man. You and, out. and on top of that, um, the one fa- I did like, they were so, oh, stay an extra hour. I'm like, all right, I'll do another hour. So, and they were like, all right, stay another hour. I'm like, all right, I'm, I've already done like five hours straight standing, playing music. I'm exhausted. And you guys look like you shouldn't even be on the road. Oh, play another hour, man, because if you don't, I'll just make a phone call ahead and we'll have you arrested in 12 seconds faster. I'm like, okay. So did another. And finally, one of the, the wives came forward and said, Michael, stop, stop. He's got to go. He's got to go. He's got to go. <laughs> so made some serious money that night, but I was scared to death. So uh, I decided never, ever to perform for police officers ever. Again. Well, you know, again, because because I'm <clears throat> I'm a pseudo celebrity in my in my area of my my hometown. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got invited to lots of things early on uh, <clears throat> when I first, uh, I guess, back in the eighties. Mm-hmm. And there's a private school near here. You know the school of which I speak of. Uh, Xavier Cougar School <laughs> of Demented Boys. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> anyway, so they have a fundraiser every year. Mm-hmm. And their fundraiser is basically a giant party. <laughs> and it's like you can come to this, you can come to this event and you can there are people who are dressed in their finery. And like I say, it's it's like open bar. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's like you don't expect, you know the town's finest to be up in this situation, but there they are. Oh yeah. All getting hammered. <laughs> well, go ahead. Who's the bartender? Who's the bartender? Judge Lloyd Sullenberg. <laughs> <laughs> the honorable judge Lloyd Sullenberger. <laughs> um, I know you've had too much to drink. <laughs> Case dismissed. And, and I said, and I said to myself, what a wonderful world. No, I said to myself, <laughs> that's entrapment. I said to myself, self, (laughs) you know, what is to stop? You know, we could probably, we could probably collect all the fines and monies that we would need just from this one event by just having two officers of the law sitting just outside the bounds of the school. (laughs) Uh, People did not uh, take kindly to that suggestion either. Oh, you know, I do have another part coming up for you later in the show. What do you got? I got uh, my my weekly chart of why we are the fattest society in the world. <laughs> oh, gosh, that'll be more new garbage products that are going to be hoisted upon the American public. That sounds <laughs> that sounds delicious. Oh, some, <laughs> something we need to talk about. So, really, really, really important. We we'll get d- during the first segment here is. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Let me get my little uh, something that is possibly going to cause some trouble for us with YouTube. And this is coming up at the beginning of the year, and it's called. Cobra. Does anybody know about that? Anybody aware of? Cobra. It's something yeah, that's going to. Copa. Yeah, Copa. So Copa is something where. Uh, oh, guy, his name is Gary Copa. Gary. <laughs> I went to school with him. Uh, <laughs> Stop it. Anyway, um, hey, he's being serious. This is a serious moment. I this is a serious that. moment because, okay, so the couple law um, is written as such to protect children. We get it. We don't want them, you know, watching stuff that's not good for them. It's the same reason we don't have um, uh, Cocoa Pebble commercials anymore selling cereal because it's focused for children. So anything that's focused for children under age 13 has been removed from television. Anything that's uh, focused for 13-year-olds or younger has to be uh, uh, identified on YouTube. Now, here's the problem with the COPA ruling. Uh, 
uh, anything that has animation, anything that looks entertaining, music. What? So the 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 rules are so broad that just by me doing like this, that puts us into the category of something that's specifically made for children. And if you are in violation, if you've marked your video as for adults, I'm sorry, for not for children, and it really is something that has music in there, due to you will in, be infected with a fine of $42,000 per occurrence. So, December 31st, unless the rules change, we are going to strip all the videos from YouTube. Oh, man, what a drag. Yeah, so what that's the bad news. Is getting out. The good news is <clears throat> we're going to put stuff up on Daily Motion. Now, Daily Motion has a limit of one hour. Now, if due to JD's and mine shenanigans, that this goes over one hour. <laughs> I can try editing it down to make sure it's exactly 3,600 seconds long, or I could break it up into two 30 minute slots. So I think I'm probably going to do it as two 30 minutes live because that's basically when we stop anyway, the mid midstream anyway. Um, okay, so now, okay, wait a minute now. So because of this, uh, what is that law again? Uh, the, the law is referred to as the COPA law, and it's, it's COPPA. <clears throat> And it's extremely broad. There's a class action suit being brought against uh, the FTC uh, for it for the poorly written ruling behind it. Essentially, it was written not by lawyers, but by these guys in like uh, D.C. who are just you know filling out forms. So okay, so if you're marked for kids, mm -hmm. then what can't you do? Uh, if you're marked for that's okay. If it's marked for kids, that's fine. Now here's the here's the dealio. If it's marked for kids, you no longer receive revenue stream. You can no longer show how many hits you've had. You can't subscribe to it. You can't subscribe to it. You can't subscribe to it. In other words, you'd have to know that it somehow magically exists, and you'd have to find that link for that okay. video. So then the way to not is to make sure that you don't market to kids, right? Right. But here's the problem. If there's something in there that's entertaining for the children, due to the rules, you will receive a fine of $42,000, and then they'll flip it over to being a children's video. What? A children's video? Yeah, a children's video. It's for children. Okay, so, so, so then we just need to make sure that we play plenty of this. Take her out, cocaine. No, but that won't work. That won't work. See, the problem is any section, any area, any place within the video that's entertaining for children at any point, it could be just, you know, it could be half a second of someone goofing around going, that would be enough to trigger the system. They hear laughing in the background. Oh, that's good for kids. Yep. And they mark it as a children's video and send you a fine of $42,000. So December 31st, unless something major, major, major happens, we're pulling a whole ball of wax. Sorry, gang. Thanks. Now, all thanks to. <laughs> I don't... If you want to dig out, you got to figure out. <laughs> okay. okay. Hi, I'm JD Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And, and this, this is the Slade and Mason, Mason show. show. You know, let, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's just, it's as close enough. Just, 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 just hold on. Thank <laughs> goodness for this break. It's back. Got it. <laughs> we will return to the Slade and Mason Show. Today in history, November 24th, 1642. Abel Tasman becomes the first European to discover the island of Van Damien's Land, later named Tasmania. Named after that really cool Warner Brothers cartoon character. 1859, Charles Darwin publishes On the Origin of Species, the anniversary of which 
sometimes called Evolution Day. Before that, we I guess we were not evolving. I don't know. 1932, in Washington, D.C., the FBI Scientific Crime Detection Laboratory, later becomes known as the FBI Crime Lab, officially opens. To it, there was a lot of, wow, look at this stuff. Wow, look at this. 1962, the influential British satirical television program, That Was the Week, That Was, is first broadcast. Kind of like, tell you the history, only... Not as funny. Ha 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 1971. During a severe thunderstorm over Washington State, a hijacker calling himself Dan Cooper, also known as D.B. Cooper, parachutes from a Northwest Orient Airline plane with $200,000 in ransom money. He has never been found. Remember, it's Dan Cooper, not Dan Mason. It's not me. It's not me. It's not me. And finally, 1974. Donald Johansson and Tom Gray discover the 40% complete... Yeah, let me give this a shot. Australopithecus afferinus skeleton. Yeah, that was pretty good. Named Lucy. After those hippie freak beetles, Lucy in the sky with diamonds. I don't know. I think Astrocopithecus, Astropithecus, I don't know the name sounds better. I'm Dan Mason, and that's November 24th. Don't waste your time going to Mackey's or Brimley's. You'll wind up having to go to the dunny for 20 minutes after eating. That meat can be a dad dodgy. Plus, you'll be risking needing to take a sickie. If you're looking to get your evening tea, you need to set your eyes on a Joey burger from Pouchies, fresh from the outback. Ah, Pouchies. We don't like to call them roadkill. We like to call it nature's reclamation. We have spotters all throughout Australia spotting a downed boomer or flyer within moments of getting hit by a uti. The roos are dropped into a giant-sized stubby holder packed with ice and then add to our facility for processing. The meat is lean, delicious, and really good for you. So if you're ready for the best taste in burger that'll have you returning to us faster than a twice-chucked boomerang, come on down to Pouchies for an amazing Joey Burger. Fresh from the road? Come on down to Pouchies. You'll be glad you did. Don't waste your time going to Mackey's or... I'm an animal trainer, a circus entertainer. I've trained animals by the score, lions, tigers, and wild boar. I've made them lost a fortune in my wild career. Some say the cause was women, and some say it was bear. And then I went through bankruptcy and lost my whole menagerie. But I did not despair. I got a bright idea. While searching through my underwear, a thought occurred to me. I'm tired of training elephants, so why not train a flea? Why should I hunt for animals and through the jungle roam? Oh, when there's local talent to be found right here at home. I found one, but I won't say where. And educated him with care. And taught him all the facts of life. And then he found himself a wife. I give them board and lodgings free. And every night they dine off me. They don't eat caviar or cake. But they enjoy a good rum steak. Off my anatomy. Off my anatomy. It is an odd sensation when after meals they take a stroll around the old plantation. Now I'm as happy as can be. I've bought them lots of bricks, you see. And now they're both supporting me, they're both supporting me. Walk up, walk up, I'm the greatest show up. Walk up, walk up, and get your money's worth. See Phyllis and Henry, those educated fleas. Cavorting and sporting on the flying trapeze. So any time you itch, don't scratch or make a fuss. You never can tell you might destroy some budding genius. <laughs>
Sorry about that, gang. But now we must return you to the Slade and Mason show. Calling Dr. Hi, Howard. I'm Dr. Fine. Dr. Howard. <laughs> Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And, and this, this is the Slade and Mason, Mason show. <sighs> So anyway, that was uh, the Animal Trainer, and it was a very <laughs> inappropriate song. And uh, backed with the Sardine Song in commemoration of you ready for this <laughs> National Sardine Day. Hey, wait a minute, this is the country of Sardinia. Isn't that one of those? Uh, where was that? <laughs> that was one of the Three Stooges countries, wasn't it? Whoa, 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 whoa. Sardinia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey Dano, Dano, Dano. Yes, dear. You know, I I heard these first few notes of this week's musical entertainment. <laughs> you have got to tell. That's Charlie Chaplin, by the way. You got to tell the story about last week's musical selection and how quickly we got caught. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so okay, so last week was National Baklava Day, which is a Greek <laughs> dish. And then I played a song that was so flippin' obscure, I had to, like, Google to find out what the title was. And I roughly translated it was, I want a man to love and dine or die or dream or drown. I wasn't sure which of those was one of those synonyms. But as it turns out, it was, I want a man to love. And sure enough, we got popped. Uh, somebody in Greece has claimed rights to that particular song. So like that and the other songs we had, like the uh, Truck Driver's Coffee Shop by Dick Reinhardt and his Lone Star Boys, we got popped for that one as well. So so they don't actually pull it. They don't pull it from, from the archives. But but uh, we if any revenue that's generated, not that we make any revenue, uh uh, because, <laughs> because, because, of course, most of our stuff is we marked uh, due to children's stuff because of, and we won't have the opportunity to make any money anyway. So it's kind of a kind of a moot point. But you can certainly go visit. Our, oh, and then the fact that we're mentioning merchandise, right? That's in violation as well. So, yeah, it's it's gonna be. It, well, I'm just pulling everything. I'm just gonna pull everything. We'll go over to uh, Daily Motion and uh, just just call it a deal because, quite frankly, if it doesn't go away, it's going to be an issue. Okay, now, I I, I get all kinds of um, <laughs> material sent to me in the course of a week. And I had to share this one with you, Dan. This, <laughs> okay, this is an actual 911 call, all right? Okay. So, ah. Hey, hit the uh, nine one one. What is the address of your emergency? Um, maybe we can go to my preschool to check out how good it is. Is it okay if I hang up on you? No, don't hang up on me. Are your parents home? Uh, my my parents are home. Can I talk to your mom or your dad? You can talk to my dad. Okay, get your dad for me. I want to talk to your dad. Okay. Hello, this is Isaiah's dad. <laughs> Oh, Isaiah, I know it's still you. <laughs> How did she figure that one out? She's a genius. <laughs> Hello, this is Isaiah's dad. Hi, this is Isaiah's dad. <laughs> I mean, that is an actual call. That's I did not cute. pick that up. That's cute. It's say the darndest thing. <laughs> so, uh, so recordings. Oh, are we going to get Ding Green in a kid program now? Probably. Ding. Yeah. Oh, that's the other thing. If you have children on there and you don't mark, oh, man, the rules are just so bad. Um, so I, I was doing a little research on that recording of Charlie Chaplin. He did, he did a lot of recordings, and he did one where you could actually see them. The whole orchestra, you wouldn't believe it's like everybody gets into the something the size of a of a small bathroom. Yeah. And on the <laughs> other side of the wall is the, the guy doing the recording, but these the recording microphones, because they didn't have microphones back then, they were these huge horns, they're about four and a half feet long. And they're going through these little tiny holes and they they expand into these uh I don't know, eight or nine inch round diameter openings. 
and everybody's facing towards this little tiny opening. And on the other side is a little cutout. It's about eight inches by eight inches. And you see this hand come out and he goes like a, and a one, <laughs> and a two, and a three. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh. To make recordings back then, it was, it was, it was a true, true art form. Uh, you know, I've seen the old Motown days where everybody was in the same room recording. <laughs> and I mean, I thought, boy, that's got to be chaotic. Because if you hit one wrong note, you got to start it all over again. Oh, my gosh. Who was it? Somebody came up with the idea. It was, uh, who came up with the idea of the two micro two or more? It was like, like Elvis Presley or somebody like that. And, and they were everybody went, oh, my gosh, more than one microphone. What an idea. Good. Yeah, exactly. It yeah. had never occurred to them. Like, hey, let's have more than mic- more than microphone. But yeah. All right. So, um, what do you, you want? Have... I'm sorry. I'm still like I'm still drinking my uh, uh, Swiss Miss. Oh, okay. Do you want any uh, in it or at all? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, um, this brings me to my next point. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You know, here it is: the twelve days of Christmas coming up. Speaking of the point, do you remember that movie? That was a great movie. No. Me and my arrow. Uh, the no. point, you know, song. No. Is it, it was about discrimination. Oh, so it was about white people. Uh, well, it was a, a whole community where white people. The, the kid had a point on his head, and he was ostracized. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume you've not seen this movie. This movie was made by white people. <laughs> Uh, yeah, All right. and 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 the dog, his little pet dog, also had like a point pointy nose. So they were they were ostracized. And they were kicked out of the community. They didn't do that to the coneheads. <laughs> we're from France. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, man! It's like I was going to go into some serious tip here. Uh, don't go into serious stuff. This is the Slade Mason show, man. We don't do serious stuff. This is the Slade Mason show. Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And this this is the Slade Slade Mason Mason Show. See, those guys just said so. (laughs) Now, listen. What? 12 Days of Christmas, it has seen an increase of 2% from last year. I didn't even know I could buy a partridge in a pear tree for $217. Yeah, well. For two turtle doves, $300. Mm-hmm. I, I this this seven swans of swimming gets me. Who the heck determined that they seven were worth thirteen thousand dollars? Seven swans of swimming. But eight maids of milking are only going to get fifty eight dollars. Nine ladies dancing will cost you seventy five hundred dollars. I think this is an F major. Hold on. Five, five golden ring. No, that's not right. Okay, sorry. And ten lords of leaping. That's ten thousand dollars. Well. You now know, listen, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, okay, if you can get ten lords of leaving for ten grand, how come you can get eleven pipers piping for two thousand dollars and twelve drummers drumming for only two thousand dollars? Okay, so the leapers they have to pay uh, uh, SAG memberships. So uh, because of that, <laughs> I was a member of SAG and After for a long time. <laughs> it's a higher rate, but yeah, musicians I, they're a dime a dozen. So you can that's right. Members. There's all kinds of musicians. Yeah, that's, that's the deal. Yeah. All right, now I was going to tell, I told you last hour that I was actually getting involved in, of course, trying to make sure that I proved why America is the fattest country in the world. We have got to come up with a jingle for this because every week I get some new stuff. Are right. you ready? Go, okay. Uh, uh-huh. Junk Food Leak says that Kit Kat is releasing a new flavor called birthday cake. Yeah. Has white chocolate on the outside, sprinkles, and wafer cookies on the inside. Okay, I'm going to say no. Okay. All right, all right. Good. Captain Morgan. You know who Captain Morgan is, don't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's my brother-in-law. He, uh, yeah. He's, uh, he's kind of tipsy, though, I think. Yeah, right. He always keeps that, that high step up there. <laughs> Captain Morgan is selling a limited edition gingerbread spiced rum. No! <laughs> He's back! (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's see here. Sora News claims an all-you-can-eat KFC is open in Japan. (laughs) 
people are waiting five hours to get into the restaurant to eat. And how fast are they getting out of there? Okay, so here's the dealio. All you can eat KFC. Uh, so they changed the recipe. So it tastes like it's a salt lick. So, <laughs> and sure as donuts, if you go back, they'll find out, they'll tell you, they actually added MSG to the mix-up. Wow. So now it tastes saltier and sugarier and oilier. And, uh, Colonel Sanders is rolling over in his grave. Yeah, it's great. It's great. All right, let's see here. We got to make sure we keep people safe. Kraft is recalling Breakstone Cottage Cheese because customers have been finding red metal and plastic chunks in it. That's not an accident. That's intentional because nobody likes cottage cheese. I do. Like I, I said, love Likes cottage cheese. <laughs> I love cottage cheese. <laughs> you ever make a cottage cheese omelet? Oh, it's so great. So what you do is you start with three eggs. And then what you do is you want to get a cold, cold bowl, okay? Get yourself a whisk. Make sure it's a fine tip whisk. Don't use a big balloon whisk. Drop the three eggs in there. Whisk, 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 whisk. Now what you're looking for is so when you're done, it's going to have this nice pale yellow look to it. And as you're hitting the whites, the whites don't like stick all together. What you could do is you introduce like a tablespoon of water. What you don't want to do is put milk in because if you put milk in, all it's going to do is going to brown it. It's not going to add to it. As you're adding that, you could put a dash of salt, a little bit of black pepper. Some people put the white pepper, which doesn't make any sense to me. But this is where you can introduce cayenne into the mix. Then what you do is you get a hot pan. Now, the non-sticks are nice. I would prefer like a cast iron. The reason being, you really don't need a whole lot of butter to get this going. And the non-sticks, quite frankly, I can't use a good, decent spatula on that. And if you're going to make an omelet, you want to make sure you get this thing holding a little bit. So the cast iron comes into play in that regard. You're going to put about a teaspoon of butter in there. And as you do that, you put the eggs in there. The eggs go in, and you're going to start to pull back a little bit, kind of like when you're doing, like, scrambled eggs. And then when you do the scrambled eggs, you pull it back just a little bit. And as you're doing that, you're going to roll the egg sauce back into it so it starts to cook a little bit. Now, you're going to bring the heat down to about a medium-low. You don't want to brown it too much. Now, that's the that's the French style. If you're going to do the American style, you can go ahead and keep that on medium because it has a nice brown coat to it. Now, as it's cooking, this is where you can introduce a little bit of uh, marjoram. Now, I'm not talking about that gooey stuff that comes out of a tub. I'm talking the actual herb. The herb is marjoram. It has a sweet aroma to it, and you kind of sprinkle that on top. Then, as you're getting that going, you see that the surface just starts looking a little bit white, uh, wet. And then you add, that's where you grab the cottage cheese. Now, you can lay the cottage cheese like in a thin line. Or what you could do is you can give it a quick nuke in the microwave. And this kind of softens it up. It also brings it up to temperature. And you lay that down on top. Now, you can put some Greer cheese on top of that. Oh, man, that'd be so nice. You can do some mozzarella. This is also where you can introduce maybe a little bit of hot sauce. And then what you do is you fold it up very gently and you lay that down. Now, meanwhile... Hopefully, as you put the eggs into the pan, you've already got some toast going in there. I would recommend like a, oh, like a nice big toasty Texas style toast, nice and thick. And you put it in there and as you toast it up, it pops up, comes out, get that a quick buttering and that you have a really great breakfast. Mm -mm -mm. Don't bogart that joint. My friend, doom, doom, pass it over. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to be in violation of... <laughs> no, because that's certainly not for kids. All <laughs> right. So, Kraft Kai's cheese, you were saying? Uh, <laughs> they're recalling it because, yeah, you and your mystery formulas. All right. Okay. More food for, food for, food for thought. Food for thought? Yep. Brand Eating Magazine claims, now, wait a minute. How do you muck up Blue Diamond Almonds? Uh, so, oh, okay. So, uh, let me guess. It's got... Uh, um, uh, uh, e. coli? No, no. Blue Dom Mold? Blue almonds Mold. plan to introduce a spicy dill pickle flavor. All right. So what I want you guys to do is go buy the package of the dill pickle flavor. And as soon as you walk out of Walmart, you'll see the trash cans strategically <laughs> located. Just drop them in and be done with it. <laughs> there. I save you guys a bellyache. <laughs> Okay, the Daily Mail claims that McDonald's is planning to add what kind of a sandwich uh, for breakfast in 2020? Uh, that would be a chicken and beef pork uh, with with rabbit and uh, sautéed pig. Of course, we are not. We certainly are not scared of Popeyes, but we are going to introduce a chicken sandwich for breakfast in 2020. It's going to cost about two bucks. Oh, so they're cutting the price in half. 
Mm. Yeah. Jelly Belly is out with their holiday flavor collection. It includes eggnog, sugar cane, pumpkin pie, raspberry sauce, and hot chocolate. Oh, yeah, my exactly. God. Delicious. Oh, Egg, my God. Eggnog and hot chocolate. There we go, baby. All right, so Popeyes has made a lot, still making a lot of news. I mean, there's more fights in Popeyes. Now employees in Popeyes are fighting. There was a picture taken of a young man uh, preparing the chicken sandwich on trash cans because they didn't have any room on the counters. <laughs> oh, God. I think this is the most amazing thing. All right, the Daily Mail claims that an inmate named Frank Gouda became an internet star last weekend after pictures of him surfaced eating a Popeye's chicken sandwich inside his jail cell. <laughs> Someone took pictures of him before they were posted to his Facebook page. He captioned his shot with, trying to see what all the hype's about. Thanks, Bay. What the heck? So how did, how did, boy, he, talk about waiting. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. I, All right. Well, maybe he's related to uh, Drake Ke- uh, Kately. Who's Drake Kately? Drake Kately is an escaped Missourian uh, fellow from Mercer County Jail. Did you hear about this? Obviously not. Okay. This guy escaped from the Missouri County Jail and went a thousand miles to like Kentucky somewhere and was living in a bunker. And they finally found him after about uh, five or six months. He was laying out his clothes to dry, air dry. And <laughs> someone was like walking through the woods and found his bunker and and had him rearrested. Now, mind you, this is not the second time. I mean, this is not the first time he's escaped. He escaped from, again, Mercer County Jail. Uh, he went, he was at the exercise yard and he went to the fence and he rolled underneath it. So, in other words, if you're going to go to jail, go to Mercer County Jail. Yes, go to Mercer County Jail. Apparently, it's really easy to escape. <laughs> so, Drake, and maybe he got a chicken sandwich as well. I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah, well, he went out and got it and brought it back. <laughs> <laughs> really? All right. All right. I want to talk to you about legalities. Oh, you mean like things like... Coma. Well, kind of. <laughs> okay. What, do you... Nobody has my passwords for anything. I just don't. I won't. I won't share them. Okay. However, it, well, if you die, uh, I need access well, to your 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 well, record. Sir, the funny goes with me. <laughs> <laughs> I bring this up because um, you know, again, we have you know we have this great internet connection <laughs> with uh, <laughs> <laughs> our, our internet provider. Yes. Well, so last year. A friend of mine who happened to have an Xfinity account mm. shared with me her password. Oh. <laughs> now, at the time, I also had her password to HBO Plus. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and HBO Go. Well, she, she ran into some financial difficulties, so she had to cancel the HBO's. But she kept the infinity, the Xfinity. So you egged her house. <laughs> so now, so what happens is that every once in a while, our internet provider will not, I mean, it just won't stream right. It just won't. And that's when I switch to the Xfinity account <laughs> where I get smooth transitions and things like that. Oh my gosh. Well, now there, this, this password sharing is a big deal. And you know, they just came up with brand new streams, Disney plus. Yes. So the Daily News says that thousands of Disney Plus subscribers have been hacked since signing up for the new streaming service. Mm. They proclaim that hackers are selling stolen customer accounts on the dark web for $3. <laughs> and if you buy the stolen passwords, of course, you can watch Disney Plus for free. <laughs> ah, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, I, I, I had someone post on my Facebook page. They posted uh, HBO Go, uh, Disney Plus Streaming. And all the other streaming services, eight of you are going to be gone. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, Disney come uh, Netflix. Uh, I hope they see the writing on the wall. But Netflix had the same problem, and you know how they got around it? How they didn't? That's the that's the that's the problem. They don't know how to do it. So let's say you are visiting a relative. You know, let's go. You're going up to Philadelphia, and you're visiting a relative. You you log in with your Disney Plus account, 
what, 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 bump you off? Why would you bump me off? I have an account with you guys. I just happen to be in Philadelphia. Yeah, so, well, see, so, well, and that's, now, they're trying, they are trying to be able to cut that out so that, you know, again, maybe they can find some way to figure out, hey, wait a minute, you're not who this is. It's like, mm-hmm. boom, you're gone. But, yeah, they, they're a long way from that one, brother. Yeah, so I think what's going to happen, you know, with the whole uh, situation is probably Disney gets around it because you subscribe to that because that has nothing but kid content on it. So then yeah, I, I, people are paying uh, whatever well three dollars. <laughs> yeah. So maybe 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 we can start charging people to listen to the Slade and Mason show. What do you think? Well, okay, kids, if you're listening, go into your mom's purse <laughs> and get her, look for the little wallet with all the president's faces on it. Uh, Grab as many of you as you can and then send it to us. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Conjunction, junction, what's their function? See, the kids will think that's a great song. Yeah, then we'll get in trouble. And <laughs> no, just a little bill, and I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. So, did I tell you about? Did I tell you about sourdough? I was making sourdough. Oh. Oh. So here's what oh. you do. <laughs> All right, so here's here's how you start with sourdough. You take about seventy ounces, seventy ounces, seventy mil, seventy grams of flour, seventy grams of water, and you put it in a container. You mix it up and you put a lid on it and leave it on the counter. Grams. That's about three and then, ounces. And I then tomorrow you take seventy to seventy gram. grams of water and you that take seventy ounce. grams of flour yeah. and you mix that in. Okay, and then the next day you take. 140 grams out and you throw it in the trash and you put 70 grams of flour, 70 grams of water. And you keep doing this for 10 days or longer. Basically you're feeding. And what happens is you'll start to see like green mold and pink mold and what have you, but just stir it all up. Just stir it up. Cause what's going to happen is eventually the, the spores that are the sourdough, they take over. And they become the dominant uh, species in there. And after about mm, three or four days, it'll smell like a wet sock that was excreted by a dog. Just keep ah! stirring it up, stirring it up. And you'll see this like gooey stuff on the surface. That's called liquor. Uh, I wouldn't drink it. So stir it up, stir it up. And after, yeah, after about 10 days, it starts to smell like sourdough. So then what I did was I actually made some sourdough bread with it yesterday, which takes about 18 flipping hours from head to flipping toe. Well, actually, it sort of takes like 12 days. <laughs> yes, no, that's true, yeah, plus the other 10 days on top of that. Now, uh, how did it turn out? Well, I didn't have any bread flour, so I used regular all-purpose flour. Uh, did it puff up? No, it looks as flat as the Millennium Falcon. But anyway, <laughs> tasted just like sourdough. <laughs> <laughs> but it was about as thick as my thumb. Oh, I don't know what to make of it. But yeah, that's uh, Sarah. No, I'll keep feeding. I'll, I'll figure it. Huh? Show you the difference because, like I say, uh, that was an interesting story, and it's like, and I actually enjoyed that one more than I enjoyed the other one. But anyway, okay, here we go. Fast food restaurants. This is my last nuts of the day. Okay. Uh, the Daily Star claims that Luke really of Birmingham, England, recently received the shock of his life after he received a raw burger from McDonald's. Mm. He took the burger home and unwrapped it before spotting the raw beef. Luke tells the paper, at first they messaged me back apologizing, but then it went all quiet and they've ignored me since. Well, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Well, he could put it in the glove compartment of his car. It'll be just as fresh as the day was when he got it raw. five years, that's right. (laughs) And then, okay, I, I knew this was going to happen. I knew it. Uh-huh. TMZ says that a group of vegans is suing Burger King because the chain cooks their plant-based Impossible Burger on the same grill as their meat burgers. Yes, I know. Lead plaintiff Philip Williams says his burger was contaminated by meat byproducts. He's looking for monetary damages and wants Burger King to stop cooking their plant-based burgers and meat burgers on the same grill. Well, too well, bad. We'll do. We will buy you the new grill and your your what is that thing called? Um, the Forever Burger or whatever. The, the Impossible uh, Burger. The Impossible Burger will then cost you eighteen dollars. 
There you go, baby. Then you'll be a happy camper. Hey, guess what? We're not going to get dinged for being too long. Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And this is the Slade and Mason Show. I don't know. We're already over a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye, Mr. Slade. Well, goodbye, Mr. Slade. But, I, you know, I'm just all used to fooling around after we get done. Yeah. Shh. Oh, say, 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 uh, say, say, happy birthday, David. Happy birthday, David. Whoever David is. One of our listeners. No, we're hanging out. Yeah, that's what happened to me. Remember, we did Busted by the Copa police. Ooh. Say goodbye, Mr. Slade. I don't want it. It's like I say, we should just keep going and going and going until they just start to start to come to your house and take your equipment away. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, Mr. Slade. Goodbye, Mr. Slade. Goodbye, Mr. Mason. Bye, Mr. Mason. Goodbye, Mr. Bye, Mary Ellen. <laughs> Bye, cowboy. <laughs>